Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Coming up on this week's show, we check out that new Garmin 530 that logs your air miles. There's a bike-specific jet wash and a whole bunch of other cool stuff, including a new new proof in the raw finish. Okay, so straight into news, what we got first, Henry? So, first of all, we have the Nukeproof Mega 290 Works, which is... Cracking bike anyway. It look good, but yeah. anyway, yeah. yeah. You've got one, haven't you? Yeah. So it's only 50 units globally, and the most eye-catching... 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 5-0. Oh, okay, be quick on that, yeah. The most eye-catching thing is it's in RAW, and it actually yeah. looks incredible. Yeah, we're not talking about raw like silent edits here, we're talking about no paint, basically you can see the bare Oh yeah, alloy. all the worlds, and actually, there's the argument that if you want to display your bike in RAW, you have to have everything, all the welds done to a high standard because yeah, they're, they're shown off. Yeah, yeah. So it kind of shows... Good workmanship, really. Good workmanship, yeah. yeah. And faith in their own workmanship yeah. as well. I guess it could arguably be a bit lighter as well. Uh, in yeah. some cases, the paint's obviously heavy on bikes. Yeah, but it depends on yeah. which lacquer they put on. I yeah, guess. yeah, for sure. It could have thick lacquer, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it comes with 170mm Lyric Ultimate. Yeah, so I think the standard one. one's 160 up front and 150 yes. out back in it, but with air shocks. But 170 is what the CRC Nukeproof team were running. Okay, yeah, for Enduro spec. Yeah, for yeah, Enduro. Yeah. And Keelan was actually going up to 180 at one point on his oh, book. Which God, I think cool. must have been a train yeah. going through stuff. He actually let me swing a leg over it, and yeah. I went for kind of, so I wasn't riding as hard as he would, but mm -hmm. it actually felt real good. Really good. That's a great bike. I mean, awesome. It's a big old chip. They're super yeah. nice. Reach is perfect for me, I think. And yeah. yeah. It just absolutely tracked us through anything. I noticed uh, in the pictures you've got on the screen there, it's got a coil shock in the back as well. Yeah. So I'd be quite interested to try, because I've got an X2 on mine, Float X2, and it feels pretty damn good with that one. Yeah, well, if you look at the new, yeah, again, the team's bike checks, they're yeah. actually running those mushroom cans from RockShox now, yeah. which are prototype. They're not in, not into the world yet. Yeah. Now, what will that do is, it has a bigger negative air chamber, so it, I suppose it's supporting it through the stroke more. Sure. Yeah. So maybe it'd actually be in line more with a coil. Yeah, okay. With an active mid stroke, perhaps. Yeah. So it's hard to say. I'd love to try one, though. I mean, I'd love to feel the grip on a coil on that bike. Yes. It's got so much grip anyway with that long back end, but. Yeah, yeah well, there you go. There's only 50 of those. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, snap them up. They're probably already gone. <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> All right, so this one's a bit of an odd one. It's not strictly tech, but there is tech involved. So on the screen now, you see some images from Plus 3 Training. Now you get different types of bike training out there, but this one is really quite different. So it's looking at multiple things, like your bike setup, your suspension setup, your body position on the bike, and your physical training. And there's some pretty good names in, involved with this. So first here, you've got Will Soff, who's a, an expert bike trainer. Then you've got Alan Milway, who's responsible for largely getting the Athertons up to fitness in their absolute prime. Yeah. You've got Ben Cathro, if I've seen his track walk stuff on Red Bull. And then Jordi Cortez from Fox Racing. Yeah, it's a bit so of a dream whole, team of so setting up a bike, eh? Hey? It's a really different way of doing it. So I think we had a conversation a while ago where if you're going skiing or snowboarding or anything else, you wouldn't hesitate to get lessons yes, where appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. But for some reason, people don't tend to do it as much with bikes. Yeah, and getting coaching, well, no, I think no matter what standard of rider you are, having the outside perspective is so important. I think people just think mountain biking, I can ride a bike, so I can ride a mountain bike. Yeah, but actually but, it's a different but then approach. I think the understanding as well, mm. on top of that, and having someone like Geordie, so you, you'll have seen Geordie probably in like the Santa Cruz videos, looking after the bikes of Loris Verge, he's always clowning around yes, with him. Yes. And this guy, what he doesn't know about suspension is really not worth knowing, like he's an absolute expert. And I think the idea of the day and the weekend you hang around with these people yes, is, is they set cool. your bike up, basically, you go and ride, they analyze your bike, and analyze your riding, and then in the afternoon, then they go to town and they really make you understand what you can get out of it. See, I would love to do a video of one of us riding where we don't get to set up our bike. Yeah, and, and then it's the other only one does. done off feedback from an engineer. Ah. And they just keep saying, we can only tell, t talk about symptoms and they can say. So we don't set up how we like it, we set up yeah. how they tell us. How they, we don't need to set it up at all, we just ride it and report yeah, let's back. Let's do it. That's kind of cool. Idea. But what's interesting is they, Geordie's only going to work on the Fox suspension. Ah, uh, yeah, so, so you if your bike hasn't got Fox. <laughs> yeah. I'm at 60% sag, out. what can I do? <laughs> Not a clue, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I'm but, bottoming out. Oof, in a pickle there, aren't we? <laughs> you know? but, jokes aside, it sounds like a pretty good idea. And it's not focused just on racers, it's focused on anyone who wants to get the most out of their bike. Yeah. So we're going to throw a link in the description below this video if you're interested in that. It's up at Dunkeld in Scotland. Great it sounds like a pretty well. cool package yeah. wow. of stuff. And I think this might be the start of a new form of training camp where mm. it's like an all-inclusive thing where you get to learn more about your bike, the tech stuff on it. Yeah. Um, I think that's great. I think maybe I think we should so. go on something like that ourselves and yeah. see how they do it. <laughs> I'll put my hand up. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> we might miss this one because it's at the end of May, but uh, the yeah. next one, sign us up. 
All right, so next up is the new Garmin 530. So again, this is a different type of tech. This is like real digital tech. Um, obviously great for training aids and stuff, but there's some new features on these which I've not seen before. Now I know that Neil's gonna make a video all about this and how you're gonna be able to use one of these to make your riding better, but they've got these new dynamic settings on it. It can actually tell when you're airborne, how long you're airborne for, and it can rate you on that. Now they've also got other things called grit and flow. And it basically measures how erratic your riding is. Oh God, um, <laughs> I don't <you> know. know. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and how smooth you are and where you make up pace. Mm -hmm. So if you, for example, you're out training, sessioning a downhill track, it can figure out if you're losing time by being too erratic with your riding wow. and tell you where to smooth out. I think that that is some amazing digital tech. If it that is. can actually do that. It also ties in really nicely with what we're saying about that training camp in Dunkeld. Yeah. It's sort of a similar... It's analysing what yeah. you're doing and helping you make improvements. Because I just put mine on a bike, Yeah. went riding this on Sunday, Yeah. and at the start I didn't, it was a lot of beeping, yeah. I didn't know what was going on, but it, yeah. it has got an accelerometer. It tells you how far you've jumped, Yeah. all that sort of business. And this, what was cool actually is the screen's so big on it. I mean, I don't even, I don't want to know Quite how discreet, close though. I am to a cardiac arrest yeah. going up hills yeah. and how poor, poor and unfit I am. But it's pretty cool, man. Nice bit of tech. Yeah, so we've not really done much with digital tech on on GMBN Tech. So if there's anything you want us to make, let us know because we're quite interested. There's a lot of different things we can look into: power meters, uh, accelerometers, even the stuff like suspension dynamic stuff. So I reckon there's some probably some good in-depth stuff we can make down the line. So let us know in those comments if there's something you'd like to see me and Henry make. So more nuke-proof news. Sam Hill actually made the switch over to a 29er. That's about time, isn't it, to be fair? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny. I, I sometimes wonder if, in terms of setup, riders can become a caricature of themselves. You know what I mean? Almost like, a bit anti-establishment, do you think? Like trying to, attempt, but you know, like trying to stay with the flat pedals and the little wheels. Of, but, well, he went very well on it. He got his best result oh, of the season so yeah, far. 100%, yeah. Um, it looks great. It's like 80s inspired moto, much like his McEwen helmet. Great or disgusting. Oh, great. Oh, I, I personally think great. I love the colours, but I know from looking through comments on various sites out there, a lot of people are like, oh my God, this thing's, I think it's amazing. I, I think, think it's really cool. If it's I very had, on point now as well. If I had that bike and people weren't, you know, offended and horrified by yeah. it. I'd be disappointed. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? I, I want people to be like, eh, because it shows you're doing something right. Do you know, you know what I mean? mean? And as a team race bike, it's going to be a photo yeah. and a hell of a lot. It looks great, does that job. Oh, totally. But, but something that I notice about Sam Hill's riding and it surprises me that he's not ridden 29 sooner is the fact he doesn't move around too much on a bike. He's got quite like a bullish stance uh, in a good way. Uh, you see some other riders move around loads and they moan yes. about the wheels rubbing on the bits and stuff, but I reckon Sam, once he gets tuned in, I actually could be one to watch. had an interesting, because I rode for the first time the 29er, the mm -hmm. new proof 29er, and then went straight back and immediately I finished my ride, I spoke to Sam about his thoughts on the 29er. Yeah. And he was saying a lot of it was how he feels climbing on the bike and the excess rotational mass. Yeah, that's he gonna be a just, struggle with those tires. Yeah, he said it just put him off. Yeah. and. Um, yeah, no, it's just interesting, but he's such a... Well, it will also be interesting then to counter that if he, he taps into running slightly less mm. less rotational mass and maybe some slow, uh, faster tyres, Yes, and which you can get away with on the bigger wheels. It's true, and I think that's what's really interesting. If you look at Sam's race bike, mm. him and JC as a mechanic, have such a pragmatic approach. Everything is about finding the, the reasonable middle ground. Yeah. The hand guards, all that extra you know, all the extra security for things like punctures and all that sort of thing. It really is a trend of just like, this is this is what we're gonna do and this is what's gonna work. And it's a constant evolution. I find it fascinating. I can't see Sam being one of the racers that's gonna hop on there, try it and hop back. I think this is, yes, this is Sam, 29's deal with it and he's gonna <laughs> smash everyone once he figures it out. Probably on the money there. Right, okay, so next up in news, uh, Manitou's got some new stuff on the block. Now, Manitou were huge back in the day and had one of the coolest retro bikes in the world, actually. In fact, we're going to get to that later in the show, so I've got one. Um, but they've got some new forks out. They've got the Meza and the Mara Pro. Um, how much do you know about this? You were talking about them earlier on, I think. Yeah, bits and pieces. So they've got loads of adjustment, and that's one of their big selling factors. What hmm. I find really interesting is they have three air chambers in there. So they have two positive right. and one negative. That's cool. This is to, to fine-tune the compression the compression and leverage strokes, so the progression of the shock, how it feels, sorry, of the fork. And I think it's really cool. I haven't seen an explode the diagram yet, because apparently you screw in the shock pump halfway to do the positive, yeah, and all the way right. to the bottom to do the negative. 
So it must have some, almost, yeah, yeah right. a bypass circuit. So I'd be really That's curious true. to try. So Manatee back in the day were amazing. Mm. Uh, they did TPC. They did so many good things um, in such a short period of time. In fact, it was you know Rock Shops was first, and then Manatee was pretty much second on the scene with the, with the Manatee fort that Tomac famously rode on his drop handlebar bike. But, um, um, and they were beautiful. Yes. And then so, at some point they just. Don't know what happened with the brand or the ownership of it. But, but that Hayes Manitou package is going under yeah. such a resurgence. Yeah, with Those the Hayes new brakes, brakes are incredible. Dominion, are they, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. they're amazing. And, and the, the little grub screw adjustment on them. Yes, it's so, so... Painfully um, obvious. Yes, well, it is. It's yeah. embarrassing yeah. when yeah. you come to think Why of it. Why has no one done it? There's also, they've got the Mara Pro Shock. Okay. Now, the interesting thing about this, and I'm not going to say whether it's good or it's bad, but the shock is remarkably easy to deconstruct and rebuild, which sounds great, but it's going off the theory that, I know I worry that people, perhaps without the understanding of shocks. Oh, so what do you mean for people to do at home? Do it at home. All oh, right, so yeah, Marzocchi well, okay. did this a few years ago, mm. well, I say a few years, probably about a decade ago with the Rocco. Mm -hmm. And they were like, you could do this at home, it doesn't need to be nitrogen charged, you can shim it yourself. Yes. Or get it wrong yourself. Yes. I think that's what you were trying to say. Isn't and it? if you look compared to, say, Fox, and what you have to do with the Fox is, I mean, you can do it at home, you get a little Dremel and you cut a groove in a four mil, you go get a needle and you bodge onto the end of your shock pump and yeah. you can charge those nitrogen chambers with yeah. normal air. But a lot of people even get, well, I know people just bleed stuff badly. Of course, there's too many little things, things to I worry wrong. about it. Yeah. I like the idea though. I like that. I think, I think it's really cool. Yeah. Um, and also, just just on top of that, just was saying about Marzocchi a second ago, they've got a shock out called the, I think it's called the Bomber CR, mm. and it's pretty much the same chassis. I might be wrong on this, but pretty much the same as the old Fox Vanilla. Yes, and that's chewable. a pretty pretty basic shock, mm. but tuners love it because the fact you can shim it so easily and change it around. So I guess you know there's lots of options if you're in the market for core shocks, which are definitely back on increase again. Yes, big time. It's good to see. All right, so this one's an interesting one. So Muckoff, the brand behind the famous pink cleaning liquid, they got the world's first, or, or the first, they're claiming, a bike-specific pressure washer. Yeah, because I've clicked on the link, I'm looking at a picture, all I'm seeing is a Karsha. It looks very similar <laughs> to Karsha, which, which is can no bad you, thing because that's a household name and they make yes. great kit. But can you get a bike-specific pressure wash? Well, I think that works one that I've got is near enough bike-specific. Is that the one that goes straight? It runs off a battery. Yep. You can get different size batteries. So you mm -hmm. can take it with you in your car or your van, mm -hmm. or you can use it at home with a host. So, yeah. so I think that is actually bike-specific. And you can also do the flame afterwards. Yeah, you so certainly can. Pretty much mandatory as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, you can hold it in the mirror like you would in like BQ and make, <laughs> sure, you, make sure you look good at it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, jokes aside, I think Muckoff have done a great job with this. And looking on the website, they've already sold out. So. Yeah, it must be going now pretty well. Uh, definitely keen to give one a go because I especially like the fact that you can attach the bottle and you can do all that stuff. Yes, I think that is genuinely no, useful. It is good, and also anything that makes our lives easier. People are actually directing funds towards it, which yep. maybe they weren't before. So yeah. it's only going to be something better. And if nothing comes of it, then nothing comes of it. Markov is a brand; they've done amazingly well. So mm. yeah, I, I think they they wouldn't release this if it wasn't a good product. So yeah, that's very true. Yeah, fair play. Hundred percent also have some new bits and pieces out. Oh yeah, they've got like, the 80s thing. 80s, it? Yeah. super cool looking sunglasses and also some almost like O-frame like goggles, you know, really big lens that they yeah. look absolutely incredible. It says here, I don't know if there's a typo, but it's oreophobic, like the biscuits. <laughs> I mean, is that what they mean? I'm definitely not. I'm not I absolutely <laughs> love them. Yeah. Also, um, oleophobic. Yeah, so uh, they say hydroph hydrophobic and oleophobic treatment repels moisture, dirt, and even oil. Oh, wow. That, that's very, very convenient. For well, them. I'd love to try that because the sort of oils that we use, I can't, I can't imagine they'd repel, but yeah, totally. it's a nice claim. They're scratch resistant too, which, mm -hmm. um, if that is true, that's genuinely great because typically mirrored glasses. They scratch so easily on yeah. bushes and stuff mm -hmm. whipping you in the face. Um, so yeah, that could be a really yeah. good set of glasses. Yeah, they're hundred percent stuff. And look mega. Sh and it's shaking everything. everything up, you know. Yeah. They just look cool. Yeah, definitely. And last up in the news is Santa Cruz have got a new version of the Stigmata. So good. So it's, it's a gravel bike. So we did say oh, a few word. shows back that we've got to kind of tackle this because it's kind of no man's land at the moment. Like GCN don't know what to do and we don't know what to do. So um, if you want to see us do some gravel stuff and the same on GMBN, let us know in those comments. But here's a couple of shots of that Stigmata. It, um, it looks amazing, especially in the yellow. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, my like, sort of God. Desert yellow kind of, I think. Yeah. Um, so they say really there's only a few improvements to it, so there's different fork offsets on the two different sizes now. Um, 
There's also the frame will clear up to 45 mil tire and 700 seat or fit a 2.1 650 mm -hmm. in. So that's like a genuine mountain bike tire. And it's so fascinating, yeah. isn't it? It's gone full circle. It's basically we, a mountain bike from the 90s. Blooming drop handlebars and going mountain biking on road derived bikes. I, won I wonder what Tomac thinks about this. Yeah. Because he did it first <laughs> and he's fuming. Pe people used to copy him <laughs> and he used to laugh at them and be like, what are you doing that for? <laughs> so, but, uh, but jokes aside, so it's got three bottle mounts, so you can run a frame bag and still run a bottle in mm. there, which is quite cool if you can use it for bike packing. It's got fender mounts or mudguard mounts, so mm -hmm. you could use it as your daily, yeah. which is cool. That actually like, really appeals to me. Reduced toe overlaps is basically longer. Um, yeah. Just sounds cool. And there's also the women's version, the Juliana, called the Quincy, and, and that's, that's that one. Yeah, and it not only looks great, but they've also got those reserve wheels in the 700C now, ah, yeah. in the 650. Yeah. And I think, yeah, they look great as well. It's funny how Santa Cruz often just get things right. Yeah, you know do, I mean? do you know what? They kind of annoy me. Oh, do they? Because I can't not like them. They make great stuff. They're very cool. The bikes are good. Like yes, it's true. It's they're like, kind they're of, just, yeah. They do what they do, and they do it well. Yeah, no, they do. Okay, now it's time for a bike cave. You know the drill, this is where you keep your bikes, where you work on your bikes, all of that cool stuff where your tools are and your bikes are locked up and tucked up at night. If you've got a cool bike cave, a cool bike van, any of that sort of stuff, take some photos, tell us all about it and send it into the address on the screen. Now this week, instead of going through all the amazing entries that you lot have sent, I actually by chance went to see a friend who's got a new business called Full Factory Bike. Now it's a suspension tuning business and I had a look around his bike cave and this thing is just loaded with cool stuff. Pretty snazzy. Yeah, so first picture on the screen, check this out. So um, it's, he's got just about everything you can imagine. He's got old retro stuff hanging up on the wall. He's got all these top shelves are completely loaded with every suspension spare mm -hmm. you can imagine in here. And he works on pretty much all brands from what I can gather. Now look at this, so he's got optics on the wall, the type you see in a pub. It's so cool. But full of suspension it's oil. Absolutely brilliant. That's a really like, good I want idea, that. I want that at home just for, I know not only is it cool, but it's also really functioning. It yeah, really it's, works, I, it's so it's good. It's genuinely good, I think we should do it in here. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Obviously you don't want to come home from the pub and go for another shot and then <laughs> get that one wrong. Um, it's also, I noticed he's got one of those smart washes, but that one's like an eco-friendly one. Honestly. Yeah, which is great they idea. Are so good i've had them in workshops before and they i mean they do more work than i ever could you know what i mean they're so useful you can leave stuff soaking in there always cleans down no just absolutely sensational so no it's one of the services he does he does all the regular suspension tuning forks and shocks and stuff he also does rebuilds and cleans for people mm -hmm. um and i think that was the motivation to get himself yeah. a parts washer either that we got a parts washer if you wanted one and justify I mean, it I'd by offering that as a service do my washing in there dirty dishes I, I <laughs> I quite fancy taking a dirty bike around there actually <laughs> and letting him loose on it. Uh, he's also in RC cars, which is pretty cool. He tunes the suspension on those as well. Practice around with them, but it's just like full of everything. He's even got a lathe. And um, I think actually, I sent you the picture. He got a bit messed up with yes. a shock bleeding tool that he was using because it wasn't good enough. So he just whipped himself up a new one on the lathe. Pretty good. Um, I think that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to give a little shout out to him. His name's Finn, is Full Factory Bike. Um, there's going to be a link in the description below this video. Um, if you're based in the UK and you want to get your bike kitted out, sorted out, he also does e-bike uh, motor servicing and bearing changes and stuff. Um, have a look on his site. It's a great little site and full of cool stuff. Um, in the meantime, we're going to rob your idea of using the optics for uh, suspension oils. I was definitely going to pretend that I came up with that as well. That's brilliant. Oh, yeah, yeah. no, I just thought of it one day. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's one of the cool. In fact, that's a top mod right there. Yeah, banging. Um, straight into Rewind now as well, because whilst I was over at Full Factory Bike, I noticed he just had a delivery of a very, very special bike. So way back in the sort of uh, late 80s, early 90s, there's a guy called Doug Bradbury, and he's responsible for Manitou Forks, which we were just talking about in news. Nicely now, in. So this, this is like super cool though. So back in the day, everyone's trying to figure out how to put a shock on a bike, this and that. He's like, well, I'll just put a pair of my forks on the back. So it's a single pivot, and it's literally got a pair of suspension forks on the back. And the cool thing about this one that you can see right here is this is the fourth prototype. So, really I smart. mean, this one's got a crack in a BB shell, but you've got those Manitou 2 forks on the rear, on the seat stays there original flight saddle on there. Mm -hmm. They look like Arsa Hyperlite bars, but I don't think they are. Original grip shift X-rays, a massive stem that you could pretty much go sailing with. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a tiller, isn't it? Go down the canal on that thing. Yeah. Um, the forks aren't period, sadly. They're Manatee Mac 5s, so they're a bit newer, um, but I think he has plans to get rid of it. 
but there's a whole bunch of cool stuff in there. It's the original Hope Hubs, mm -hmm. which had a I think a tie part in the middle used to bond onto the two flanges. But it's just something about a raw frame with purple parts. Yeah, they just, it's just jump out fantastically. I think it's really important. Sometimes you see people go too much, you know what I mean? But yeah. it just touches. You've got to have a little dash of it. Yeah, yeah. Just so, so good. So here's an amusing one for you. Um, he's actually colourblind, and when he laced up these wheels, because he just wanted, he wasn't happy with them, he thought he was using um, purple Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, but, they're, but they're, they're red, they're green, and they're blue. Oh. <laughs> But end, ends up actually looking, looking really, really cool. good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He won't thank me for that, but it's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, and uh, so they're Mavic, uh, I don't know if they're one, two, ones or whatever they are, but they're two, three, one ceramics. So back in the day before we had decent brakes, one way to make your brakes work better was by having ceramic coated rims yeah. to give them more purchase. And it's just cool that you still see them. Like, and it's funny, like the road bike market is just going through that stage even like a year or two ago. Yeah. What can we put on our rims? <laughs> just we've been there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny, isn't it? They're taking the stuff from us now. Um, also, something that I had no idea about that even existed, um, these Continental tyres. So here we go. Sorry, there's a bottom bracket show which says Proto number four, and you can see that so crack, cool. yes. which is a real shame. I wonder if he can do something with it, because it would be heat treated, so I guess you can't just yes. re-weld it. But yeah. um, I'm sure he's going to ride it again, but it's just, that's pretty rad to see that. And mm -hmm. I don't think it cost him a lot as well. I think he got it for about... 400 euros or something. You know what you're looking for. Bonkers. Sort of thing, yeah. Picked it up from a bike shop in Geneva. Oh, right. I think, yeah. So uh, uh, Shimano Parallax hubs on there. And then here is the shot of those tyres. Uh, so they're Continental called Supercross. Now the casing on them, in the sort of the orangey colour, to me, looks like uh, IRC tyres from back in the day. Um, IRC made amazing tyres. And of course, tyre brands, as we know, they're all made in various factories. Um, so there's a good chance they could have been, in those days, at the same factory. Some look pedals that don't look like they use uh, Shimano SPD cleats on there. Terrible, I know. You should sack me for that one. <laughs> um, I can't help myself. Yeah, no. Um, but yeah, but, but just a really cool bike. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that's a number four prototype, and it's still virtually in rideable condition, minus that yeah. crack. Um, one last thing as well I've just noticed on there. The plastic top cap on the headset, you might think that looks cheap, but when Diacomp originally came out, so Diacomp we now know him as Cane Creek, um, when I first came out with the A headset design, uh, they had to put a plastic top cap on there because people were over tightening headsets and crushing their bearings. Oh, really? And they put the plastic ones on there so it would crack before you damage your bearings. No way. Which these days doesn't happen, you put a metal one on there, people just crank them up and ruin them. <laughs> you know? So actually, Diacomp, by yeah. putting a cheaper plastic top cap on, we're forward thinking. Um, quite nice. a smart idea. Yeah, pretty cool. The original A headset. There you go. Cool bike. Thanks for showing us that one, Finn. And anyone out there has got any cool old retro stuff or you want to learn about where some modern mountain bike tech has come from, um, let us know and we'll tell you the story. We will delve into our retro vaults. Um, I went to see a friend the other day, actually, and he's got a collection of about 80 bikes. And the stuff he's got in there, pretty much you can look at any one of those bikes and you can liken it to a modern day design. So I think that's something we're going to do some then and now comparisons in some future episodes of GMB and Tech. And once again, now we're into top mods. This is all about modifying your bike. Now, this doesn't mean going crazy and doing a full respray or anything, or it can. Um, this is for everyone. You could just be changing your handlebar grips and putting a new gear cable in. Whatever it is, it counts and it makes your bike different. Uh, so don't forget to tell us what you've done, take some photos and send them in to the uploader on the screen. But this week, we're checking out Henry's bike because he's done something pretty cool with the Garmin mount. Yeah, just to show that it is all inclusive, they've got gubbins over here <laughs> to show off something he's done. Uh. And basically, I was riding in Lenzerheide, it was actually at World Champs Week, and I saw Nico Vulio's bike, and he'd had a Garmin mount bonded to the frame. Mm. And I thought, well, that's pretty tidy, but I'm not a frame manufacturer. <laughs> yeah, know? so how are you going to so do it? So I thought I'd give it a stab. So what I did was I got my normal Garmin mount, made sure it was all smooth, I glued it to some of that rubbing master tape, the slapper yeah. tape, and then I applied it to the top tube. Ah, nice. So, so it looks like it's bonded to the frame. It looks like it's bonded to, but it's not. And hopefully it'll mean that I can get it off when, when you need <laughs> if, to. If I need to as well. It's actually also got a strip of honey tape down there to protect it. So Yeah, nice. Yeah, so it looks really well. up by the front, by the head tube. Yeah, so. and honestly, on the long top tubes, it just it's right in, it's in the perfect spot, super clean. Yeah, I, I might experiment with something like that. Because at the moment on my Mega, I've got the stem top cap mount. Mm -hmm. But that bike's long enough that it's okay for me. Mm -hmm. And on my other bikes, I've got it in the regular stem position. Um, I kind of don't mind it there, but I see exactly why, when you take it off, why people don't like having and Garmin there. What annoys me, and this sounds, you're going to laugh, because it makes me sound like a, the idiot I am, uh. but 
I hate it not being symmetrical. When you've got the Garmin and it comes out one side, it yeah. just does my nutting, <laughs> especially when you haven't got the Garmin attached. Yeah. So, yeah, no, did you notice you. that your mount's slightly on the piss? Well, thank you for that. Yeah, basically, <laughs> I've ruined your day. Because I cut it in half, I think it was on straight originally, and then as we actually rode when it was really hot, yeah. and I think it twisted. It just a bit. twisted slightly. So I'm going to get some wider mastic tape and go for round two. Yeah, round two. Do a little how to, a little Insta video. Bam. Here we go. So now it is time for tech of the week. This week is a shock I actually saw at the Bespoke Bristol show. Oh yeah, a couple of weeks back, yep. Yeah, it's from Push Industries, which are based oh, in Colorado. Right. Yeah. And, well, fascinating to talk to them, really. That's uh, spendy, that shock. Yes, it is. But what they yeah. do is something really cool. They don't sell their shock in just normal sizes you can buy off the shelf. What you do is you write to them, you tell them your riding style, your weight, and your bike and they will make you a shock to suit. Each shock is specific to each frame. So it's a bespoke shock that you shot at the uh, Bespoke Bicycle Show. Something like that, yeah. And he was, okay. <laughs> I can't remember the chap's name, but he was actually, what, one of the things he pointed out was, you know, a massive big bike company couldn't just rock up at a show like that. You've got to be handmade. You've got, it's got yeah. to be a craft. Of course. And so yeah. actually it's such a privilege for them to be able to be there with like-minded companies, you know, and it shows how perhaps they're slightly different. I've got to say, I was quite surprised that they were there and yeah. I didn't get the chance to get to them, so I'm glad you did. Yeah, and it's super interesting. And what he was saying was, so say if I'm riding, say I've got my Mega at the moment, mm -hmm. and if next year I change to, say, a Strive, I could send the shock back and through a, basically a service fee, which I think is about 120 bucks or something like that, it's quite cheap. They will revalve it and they'll make it fit your new frame. So Amazing. it's kind of, it doesn't run on model years. It actually just runs on what the bike needs. So it's like a buy once shock. So you pay yeah. more, but actually you can transfer it between. Yeah, I mean, it's is quite expensive. That sounds quite smart. Though. Yeah, but it's super cool. And one of the things I really like is it's got what looks to be like a climb switch. So choosing between, you know, ramping up the compression, but it's yeah. actually not. What that switch is, is actually a diverter between two different compression circuits. So you could have one set up super supple and soft. You could have one set up completely at the other end of the spectrum, maybe for jump trails, or which could also double up as a climbing mode, I suppose. Ah, but nice. whatever these two, two modes are, you can just have your shock set up. And, and flip it just between them. Flip between them. That's really smart. It's so good. Yeah. I want one. I <laughs> just look amazing. Uh, you heard it, he's on the black. <laughs> All right, there we go. There's another weekly GMBN tech show in the bag. We'd love to know what you think. Let us know in the comments below. In the meantime, for another interesting video, I'm actually going to throw you to EMBN's video on entry-level bikes, hub drive versus mid-drive, right down there. Or alternatively, you can click down here to see Doddy's guide on how to set up your brakes. Sweet. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, and of course, don't forget to click subscribe and share our content around. Cheers, guys.